Good morning. How's everyone going? Everyone excited? Yes, to be here, to praise the Lord. Correct? Fantastic. Welcome to any new visitors here. Welcome. Um, if it's your first time or you regularly come, welcome. Um, shortly we'll be going into some singing and some testimonies today. So that's exciting. So before we do that, I'd like to read a, a Bible um, passage from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31. Isaiah chapter 40, 28 to 31, and it reads the following. Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with eagle, wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What a great God we serve, correct? Amen. Amen. Pastor Phil, would you come and would we sing praise and then I'll come and pray. Alright, good morning everyone. Good, morning. good to see you this morning. We're going to stand and sing, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, and I know that that is your prayer this morning as we come together, worship the Lord together. There are more people coming in, so we'll make them welcome. Let's sing together, open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. in the middle of winter, but we are going to give it our best and sing Majesty. I know you know this one, Majesty, worship His Majesty. Be your glory, honor, and praise. 
going to pray for us and then we'll greet you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you uh, for your mercy and grace in our life, Lord. Thank you for your Son, Jesus, precious Jesus, that came and died a cruel death for our sake, a sinner, Lord. And uh, thank you that we can come to church and praise your holy name because you're worthy, Lord. And um, as we sing and, and praise your name, Lord, um, uplift our spirit, Lord. And, and as a pastor comes to preach, Lord, I pray that you open our hearts to that, Lord. Uh, as we welcome each other, I pray that you bless us in Jesus' name. I pray, Amen. Good morning, everyone. How are we uh, today? It's good. Uh, it's good that, uh, to see you and uh, you know uh, get to in fellowship and uh, in worshiping Jesus Christ, our Lord. Um, right now, so right now it's time for uh, the. For the offerings, so I'd like to ask all the children to come and collect the title offerings. time we, uh, we pray and, and uh, praise the Lord. Father, can I invite Fadi to come and pray with me please as we bow our heads uh, this morning. So I'd just like to read something small I read through the week in Psalm 34 if you would like to open with me. Psalm 34. and his ease toward their cry. Um, that, that verse touched me basically saying that God is watching, watching us and also his ease to our cry. So when we pray, we, just, we cry to God for help or whatever the cry is. So remember this morning when we pray, God is watching us and God is hearing us. So that's all. We praise you, Lord God, for this time that we can come to you. We know that you are God and you're watching us. Uh, you're all present everywhere. And also you can hear us, your children. Uh, and the verse says that the ear of the Lord toward the righteous. Uh, we are right because what you did on the cross, not because of our own doing, but because of what you did, what Jesus did on the cross. We thank you for the righteousness we received through him. Help us, Lord, also to be personally righteous in our conduct and our walk in life, to be, to be uh, an example 
and blessing to others when they see our good works. We give you glory. We thank you, Lord, for this time we can come to seek you in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for all the people who are mentioned. We thank you for all the what they're going through, Lord. We know that you, in, you know all these things and you're aware of them. Help them, Lord, uh, to put toward uh, to turn their eyes toward you, Lord, and wait for you, Lord. We thank you for your will for us. Help us to always understand your will and be patient to wait for you. We thank you, Lord, for Doreen that is back home, Lord, and recovering from your operation. I pray, Lord, that she will continue to recover to full you to full uh, health, Lord. We thank you also for Pastor Phil as he's recovering from his uh, uh, foot injury, Lord. We pray that you continue to heal him and bless him, Lord. We thank you for the message that we're about to, to hear later on. I pray your Holy Spirit will fill him and that he will speak to him and to the congregation. We also thank you for Angel is back home from uh, the hospital. We thank you, Lord, for him and also for all the blessing uh, that you've given us, Lord, for the people in this church, Lord, I pray that you bless everyone. I thank you for his wife, that she also does the filming for the service. We pray, Lord, that you bless and strengthen her of the rest of her mother as well. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you comfort her and comfort the family. We also pray for Joel and his family and uh, the, all the people traveling. We pray especially for them as they travel. I heard there was an earthquake in the Philippines. I pray for protection upon them. And also I pray, Lord, that you use them as they travel to with family and friends, that they'll be speaking to them about the gospel and the good news of Jesus. We thank for all the people who made it this morning. Uh, you know every heart, Lord. You know every need. We put everything before you, Lord. You are our God, our, our mediator before the Father. We thank you, Lord, for all the privileges you gave us, that we are called your children. Help us, Lord, to remember that, that we are your children and you care for us. We pray that you protect us from the evil one. Also pray, Lord, that you forgive us any sins we committed. We confess it before you this morning. Help us, Lord, to remember uh, to live a holy life pleasing to you. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we also uh, remember um, Sister Joy, Lord. Um, she's not doing well. She's actually very bad at the moment. So we put her before you, Lord Jesus, as we ask you to uh, deal with that situation. And, and uh, Nothing's impossible for you, God, as I read during the week, and uh, all, we do, all we have to do is believe. And uh, I pray for her in the situation with her sickness, Lord God. Um, I pray for my mum, Jeanette, as well, as she's not doing well with high blood pressure. I pray that you um, help the doctors uh, find a medicine or something to help her with that, Lord God. Um, uh, she's not doing well, especially in the mornings as she wakes up, Lord. Um, I just pray for her. Um, Lord, I pray for little um, uh, Samuel's, Samuel, uh, Maynard's little son, that is, is not doing well the last couple of weeks. I pray for his recovery. I pray for his parents as well, that you can look after them. Um, and I pray for uh, the, the Sunday service that we, at the moment, Lord God, we, we're here to praise your name and ask you for blessing upon everything that we do as the testimonies come up uh, soon, Lord. I pray that we can uh, that you can encourage them and um, that you bless them as they as they do that also. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. All right. So we've got some testimonies. Who's excited? Yeah, I'm excited. All right, so the first person I want to call up is my sister Andrea. So give her a, a, a warm hand, please. Such love, we 
you sort of tend to lose that fervor for Christ, which is which is a challenge. But I um, uh, and and when you grow up in a Christian family with Christian values, and then you go into the world, especially these days, there's a lot of questions that are thrown at you, um, and it's not always easy to answer them yourselves. Um, I just put, there's a there's a snippet of the song that is very comforting to me. So uh, it's from What a Friend We Have in Jesus. So there's a portion that says, What a privilege to carry um, everything to God in prayer. Um, and I thank God for that. Um, and uh, yeah, my prayer is that I can close it to God in the coming days. Um, because I can only say so far, He has not treated me according to my iniquities, but He's blessed me much more than I deserve. Um, I'd like to just read a verse from the Bible, so Lamentations chapter 3, uh, verses 22 and 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fade. They are new every morning, and um, praise your faithfulness. Yeah. There's one other thing. Uh, I am engaged in I will, my wedding schedule in September this year. Uh, I'm traveling overseas, so yeah, please do pray for me. I didn't forget that. <laughs> Thank you. <John. laughs> Thank you for James and thank you for his willingness to share with us his story. You're going to pray for just for your blessings for him day by day, step by step as he follows you. Lord, especially as he makes this big step, step of marriage, God, I pray that you would be with him and his fiance. Uh, and as they come back together to him here in Australia, we just uh, pray that you would bless their union. Give us strength for the day in Jesus' name. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I feel like we could go home now and we'd be done. <laughs> Thank you both for just sharing. There is a hope. I don't think you know this song. Do you? There's a hope. I want to sing it through. We're just going to do it once, and then we're going to finish off the service with this same song, okay? And the children can be dismissed. Do you want to be upstanding with me, please? There's a hope that burns within my heart. Gives me strength for every passing day. A glimpse of glory now revealed in me. It drives all doubt away. I stand in Christ with sins forgiven, and Christ in me. something that I wouldn't normally do, but I think desperate times call for desperate measures. So you're wondering what that is now, don't you? Yeah? So I want as many of you who have John and Jackie Bell's phone number, I would like you to take your phone out and send Jackie or John or both of them a text. Yeah. Can you do that even during the message? If you have their number, and the reason I'm saying that, I, I got a text from Jackie this morning, and she said we won't be able to make it. Um, John's, of 
course, he's had skin cancers on his head and his face, and, and they're putting on this cream and an antibiotic of some sort on his, on his face and his head, and it just makes him go flaming red. That's the only way I know how to say it. So he's, and I imagine it's, there's a little bit of pain in that as well. And Jackie said, she sent me a picture. I won't share the picture with you, but um, she said, we really miss the fellowship when we're not there. So if you have a phone and you have their number, permission granted, send them a text. And she answers you back, you can answer it back. I know most of you, well, half of you can do two things at one time. All right, I'm gonna, and I'll leave that open. We are going to look at the beginning of uh, yeah. Thanks, Chris. I'm going to start with prayer. And then we're going to look at when God comforts, John chapter 13, verses 14 through 11. Uh, my lapel mic's on, right? I'm just going to move this out of the way for a minute. Good stuff. Um, I absolutely love hearing from you and your stories. They really move my heart. Look, not everybody can stand up in front of people and talk. And to do that, even when you don't want to, but you feel somehow coerced or compelled to do so because of Sydney's or whatever, is, it, is an amazing thing. And I appreciate it deeply. Andrea, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your heart, Jane. Um, I feel like I know you better. And as a result of that, uh, my love is deeper for you as I hear your stories. Uh, and I know that God is honored from that. And I want to start with Andrea's verse, verses from 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And this is a perfect segue into our message today. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And then we'll come back to John chapter 13 and I'll give a brief introduction into this passage of Scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. And then we're going to look at John chapter 13. And we'll begin reading in just a few moments with verse 31. And I'm going to read a few verses to take us down to that. But let's pray first. All right? With God comforts. Lord Jesus, thank you again uh, for the opportunity to be with your people today. Thank you for the blessing that it is, for the encouragement and for the privilege that it is. And Lord, I pray for, um, especially for John and Jackie Bell right now, that they would know great love and uh, the fellowship of this community for them. Lord, I pray that as we look into the Word of God, that it might be clear to us. And we ask not only for an understanding of the Word of God, but a way to share that with others. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. John chapter 13. We are beginning with the upper room discourse. And if God gives me the liberty in the times that I'll be speaking in the next few Sundays, uh, if, if He allows, uh, I'll be taking us through this upper room discourse. So the end of the ministry of Jesus, if you can imagine that, for just a little bit, it's three and a half years of ministry with his disciples are coming to an end. Uh, he is in the upper room to have what we commonly call the Last Supper. He's with the disciples. He's also facing 
the betrayal of Judas. Judas was the only Judean. The rest of the disciples were Galilean. And, and there was no doubt some tension between them and perhaps even misunderstanding as to the place that Judas had in that group of disciples, especially when Jesus dips the bread in his cup. But what we have in this upper room discourse, the beginning of this passage of Scripture, clearly defines for us what Jesus wants many of us to know. And we're going to only pick up one thing, and there are many in this passage of Scripture. One thing, and that is when God comforts. John chapter 13, verse 31. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in Him. If God is glorified in Him, God will also glorify Him in Himself and glorify Him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you, you will seek Me. And just as I said to the Jews, so now also I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. So also are you to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Simon Peter, we love it when Simon Peter speaks up, don't we? Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus answered to him, where I'm going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow me afterwards. Don't you love it how Jesus answers with these cryptic little, you can't come, but you will come later. It's almost, I, I don't know, I just find the humor in it, but the depth of it as well. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. And you know the rest of the story. He was so unwilling to lay down his life for him. Anyway, but we know that we've read the last of it. Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow to you. You have denied me three times. John chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. It is enough for us. And Jesus said to him, Have I been so long with you? Have I been with you so long? And you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Believe or else believe on account of the works themselves. John chapter 14 and verse 1 says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. The comfort of God. This upper room discourse, this last time that the Lord Jesus will be with his disciples as a group. And these are some of the words that he shares with them. These are the beginning of the words that he shares with them. And many of us in this congregation, in this community of believers, have experienced within the last 12 months or 6 months or, or maybe even the last couple of years, have experienced the need for God's comfort. And there are people within our group right now who are struggling deeply with the need for comfort when God comforts. I love the passage that we started off with in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. But let's look at some of the reasons to why God comforts us. God comforts us 
when we are confronted with the impossible. In John chapter 13, the first few verses that we read, the Lord is telling him to telling his disciples that he's going away. And he's not telling them exactly what's going to happen, though he knew the, the path that he would take, but he is telling them enough to where that they could be, again, understanding that they are going to be without. But imagine the disciples. Imagine how they're feeling. Imagine what it was like for them to sit in the upper room, sharing that the bread and the cup with the Lord Jesus, that Passover meal, and Jesus saying, I'm not going to be here any longer with you. They are used to being with the Lord Jesus. There's the loss of physical presence, which brings us to that point of needing great comfort. The Lord announces to his disciples that he's leaving and will not be able to follow. And he says to them, in that instant of I'm leaving you, he says, I'm giving you a new commandment. Stop and think with me just a little bit. They are faced with the impossible. Jesus is leaving them. He's not setting up his earthly kingdom like they had so wanted and so desired and that they had worked for with him for the past three and a half years. He's saying, I'm leaving you and you cannot follow me. And then he says, but I'm going to give you a new commandment. And this new commandment is something that I believe that we need to focus on more and more as a community of believers. Not to the exclusion of all other truth like others do, but let's not be caught up into that morass of misunderstanding about the Word of God. Let's remember that this is what God has said to us. And Jesus says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. And by this will all people know that you are my disciples if you have loved one for another. When we are faced with the impossible, when we are confronted with that thing that we think we cannot get through, let us remember that God in the midst of that same situation with his disciples said to them, here's what I want you to do with the information that I'm giving you, and that is that you are to love one. I'm going to come back to that at the end of the message about when God comforts because I think it's important for us to cycle back to that thought. But let's move ahead to the next thing. What do we do then the next thing, this every situation that we're just respond to with love when we need the comfort is when we also realize our own weaknesses. Peter, the first one to speak of the disciples. He's the first one, no matter what, it seems, to just give that, that word. It's, you know, it's like he's a sharpshooter. He's just pulling his pistols and ready to shoot no matter what happens. Anything that moves, he's going to shoot. He's going to come out with some kind of remark. And so Peter does this in this situation as, as well. He comes out to the Lord and he says, Lord, no matter what happens, I'm going to go with you, I'll follow you, and I'll lay down my life for you. And the Lord says, no, that's, that's not going to happen. Peter is quick to offer that, but the Lord is quick to point out his weaknesses. And what was Jesus trying to say to Peter at that point? What was he trying to help him to realize? A lot of times we, I, I tend to want to smooth things over with people. Somebody comes up and it's a bit confrontational. I want to find a way through that and make everything nice and smooth again. Any of you like that? Or some of you just, you want to smack it right ahead? And let's get this sorted out now. No, I just want to smooth things out. You can work it out later when you're of a clear mind. But Jesus, he just, he goes straight to Peter's weakness. And what do you do when you're confronted with your own weaknesses, when you realize that you're not as big a dude as you think you are? 
that you're not as solid in the faith as you think you are, and Jesus sort of puts that little marker on you and he says, oh, you think that's what you do, but in reality, this is what you will do. I cannot imagine how Peter would have felt at that moment in time, and remember, I don't know whether this was, you know, right in front of all the rest of the disciples, or whether it was to the aside, just privately, but Jesus helps Peter to realize his own weaknesses. God wanted, the Lord wanted Peter to realize that he had to trust this bond that was between him and the Lord. He comforts us when we are faced with uncertainty. He comforts us when we are faced with uncertainty. Many of us are faced with uncertainty. Just thinking about people that I've talked to through the week. People that I've prayed with. Different ones. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. The fact of the matter is, is that we are in a place of uncertainty in our lives day by day, whether we think we are or not. We may have a healthy bank account. We may have a roof over our head and the mortgage may be paid or not paid, but everything is, you know, pretty hunky dory and we're pretty happy. But the fact of the matter is, none of us know what tomorrow holds. None of us know. When we're faced with that uncertainty, we need to know that Christ is always there. Now here are a couple of things about His facing us with the uncertainty that we have, and this is what He's doing with the disciples here. His death and departure was for a purpose. Remember what He says about it, that He's going to, going to prepare a place for, for us. There is a hope with that. That is the hope that we live for, right? Many of us want our heaven right now. Don't you? We, we want our heaven and we want life too. We want everything that heaven wants and we want everything that makes us happy here too. The thing about that is, is the things that probably make us happy here won't do anything for us in eternity. His death and departure was for a purpose. His death and departure has with it a promise that He will come again. His death and departure make it possible for His presence to be with us. The Lord gives us the Holy Spirit to be with us. The Lord is never going to just drop us and leave us. He's never going to take us to the door and, and say, there you go, I'll come back and get you later. No, He's promised to be with us step by step, day by day. And before He comforts us, when we are assured of His mercy and His grace. He comforts us when we are assured of His mercy and grace. You've got two conversations that happen with Philip and Thomas. And He comforts them not by principle, though he does that in a way, and he does not comfort them by force, but he comforts them by who he is, the person of Jesus Christ. And this is what he says. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. I am the way from God to man, and I am the way that man can get to God. I am the truth. The reality of truth is in his person. And I think that's something that we should also never get away from. Is that truth is based on the person of Jesus Christ. The re revelation of the shadow of truth in the Old Testament is revealed in the New Testament. The redeeming truth that is totally dependable. This way brings man to God. The truth makes man free to worship God. And the life produces fellowship with God. And even though we fail to understand many times or to live according to the way and the truth and the life, we know that God is in control. He comforts us when we are assured with 
His mercy and grace. He comforts us when we are assured or faced with our uncertainty of life. He comforts us when we realize our own weaknesses. And He comforts us when we are confronted with the impossible. And what does God want us to do with that? I'm taking you back to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verses 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. God is truly the God of all comfort. And He puts us many times, allows us to go through times where we need His comfort so that we can be a comfort to others as well. We're going to keep looking at the Upper Room Discourse in the weeks to come. And I'm looking forward to opening the Word with you uh, in that way. We bow our heads please in prayer and ask God's blessings. And then we'll have our last song and announcements please. <coughs> Lord Jesus, we ask you again for your blessings to us, your comfort with us day by day. Lord, we need it in different ways. Because of our own weakness or because of the uncertainty of life or because of just that extra touch day by day, do Lord, we need the comfort of God with us. I pray that as each of us face the week ahead of us. Lord, I pray that we, we would rely on you and as you teach us and comfort us, help us to be a comfort to each other. And Lord, even as the verses say, as you said to your disciples, this new commandment, dear Lord, that we love one another. Help us to put that into practice day by day, moment by moment. In Jesus' name I pray. We are going to finish with that song, There is a Hope. Would you stand with me again? How many verses do we have up at the end? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think you've got it already, so sing with me. All right, you're pretty clear. Sing. There is a hope that burns within my heart that gives me strength for every passing day, a glimpse of glory now revealed in the eager heart, yet drives all doubt away. I stand in Christ with sins forgiven, and Christ in me, the hope of heaven, my
you may be seated, John. All right, just a few announcements. Um, men's breakfast is Saturday at Lucio's at 8.30. If you're interested, please see Pasta or, or Paul at the back there. Um, also, small group uh, found in Andrew's house this Wednesday at 7 p.m. I'm hoping there'll be sausage rolls and pies. <laughs> Is that correct? Or oh, you're doing, yeah, correct, that's good. So that's uh, very enjoyable to um, learn about the Word of God. So if you're not in a group, please come and join us. Um, also, if you can't join us, Pastor Phil does uh, a little Zoom uh, small group. Uh, what time is that on, on Thursday? 7 o'clock. And he has a link in the newsletter. So if you're interested, please join us for that one. And in the next couple of weeks, we're going to introduce some rosters. Um, <clears throat> there's going to be set up um, some ushering. There's things to do at the church. We need help. We're coming out to you guys for help. So please, if you're interested, in these couple of weeks, there'll be sign-up sheets on the table. Um, I encourage you to join and uh, yeah, if that's, if that's right by you guys. There's a few birthdays. Uh, Dolly, she's not here, she's in the Philippines. Um, and also Claude, happy birthday. Um, let's sing happy birthday to these guys and with the guitar. Let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I think that's it. Any other announcements that I've missed? Yeah, just if, if you do want to join the Zoom, and there's a lot of letters and numbers to copy down, so just send me an email and I'll shoot you the invite on an email that will be easier for you to click on that. Rather than copying those down. But it is in there. I'll be having a good turnout on Thursday night. It's good. Bless you. All right, thank you for joining us uh, this morning. There's tea and coffee and some uh, muffins or whatever there. So thank you for coming. God bless you. Have a great week.